down below and you will see that will match a little bit with my presentation today about the garden too. But let's introduce myself first. My name is Stefano, I'm originally from Italy, but it's more than 15 years that I don't live in my own country because I've been traveling a lot and actually I also uh, I used to be based in, in the UK where I got my degree in theology at the London School of Theology and now I'm here based at the garden to my apartment just here in the garden because I'm studying at the Hebrew University, I'm studying Old Testament and Biblical Hebrew. So it's like I start, my studies is ongoing, I think I would never stop, and you cannot stop theology. So there is always new things to learn, new things to understand. So the the idea here at the Garden Tomb is to take you through an historical, archaeological, but also spiritual understanding of the place, more, impo more importantly about the crucifixion, burial and resurrection of Jesus. You must know, if you don't know, I tell you, that there are two archaeological sites in Jerusalem that claim to be the place of the crucifixion, burial and resurrection of Jesus. The more traditional one, I'm saying traditional, not official, but traditional, is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre because it was like pointed like the place many centuries ago by the time of Constantine when he was the emperor of the Roman Empire and he was like establishing his rule here in Jerusalem together with his mother, Queen Zelena. And then in a recent years, according to archaeology, but like more than two centuries ago, in the mid of the 19th century, you have scholars, historians, and people that are studying the Bible that actually started to shed some doubts on the place of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre because in certain ways they were, that place wasn't really matching the Gospel account. So the idea is today to go through the Gospel accounts and the narratives that we, we read in the Gospel and see if we have some details that will match the place where you are at today. <coughs> Last things about the Garden Tomb, it was bought by the British in the 1893. So still today, the Garden Tomb is a charity, is a non-profit organization. Nobody pays to get inside the Garden Tomb. It's everything free of charge. You haven't paid even if you are a group, but you don't know because you are a group. So you just come with your tour guide and you have paid everything in advance and you don't know what you've been paid for and which of the sites are free and which, of, which ones you need to pay in. We are absolutely free of charge and all of us unfortunately we don't get paid we are all volunteers so i need to support my my ministry i need to support my studies on my own but thank god god is, is Yahweh Jireh, so it's the god who provides so that's absolutely fantastic so the idea of the place and where everything started is by this picture so jesus was crucified to a place called golgotha which is, a, is an ancient Aramaic word that means place of the skull and the skull is the resemblance of the rock where millions of people still today believe that Jesus was crucified. Now I don't know if you see the resemblance in my picture, the eye sockets, the nose part and the lower part of the face. Today I'm talking about the rock diagonal to you. If you don't see immediately, just focus on the two caves in the middle of the rock, these are the eyes. Okay? So and then really experience and feel the pain and the screaming of the person and the man that is dying on the cross. The man on the cross is completely naked. No women, no children are ever be recorded to be crucified. I don't know if it happened, I wasn't there, but it's not historically recorded. Then we know that even that the composition of the man on the cross should be starting at the, at the cross itself. So think about Jesus, be completely naked and be killed on the cross. And then after it, it, it just breathes last, actually the birds of the air should go in and start picking from the body and start the decomposition there on the cross. That's why in that context, of course that didn't happen because we have this fantastic character that I love so much, it's Joseph of Arimathea that the Bible says that he took courage, knowing the law, he took courage and he went to Pilate asking permission to get the body of Jesus off the cross. This is an important detail that we have in the Bible that is matching also with the historical and, and, the, and the law of the Romans. So it's very relevant today that you, whenever you're going to take a picture or a video, 
the Yudon going to point out the top of the hill because it would never happen on the top of the hill but always down below. About the busy roads, I got another detail which I start my introduction with about the bus station, remember? The reason why we have the bus station today is because anybody of, I don't know exactly who bought the company who bought this land or this piece of land, but absolutely they knew the topography of Jerusalem because the spot where the bus station is today is a perfect connection into the other roads reaching the majority of the most important places in Jerusalem very well connected also with the rest of Israel. So this is the perfect spot where you have so many buses that they will right, reach different direction from here and then returning here. Listen, in the time of Jesus, the spot down below was an ancient, busy, nevralgic point where many roads, let's say three of the main roads in the time of Jesus were all joining together. The road to Jericho, the road to Damascus, and the road to Jaffa, to Tel Aviv, called today Tel Aviv. Actually, there are three roads that are moving together and joined together here in this point. So this is, although it's very noisy, I need to shout every time I do my presentation, but that is also a, a kind of, uh, 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 of a hint, a clue that I can use in order to make even more uh, lively the presentation today, more biblical the presentation today. But what is really important for us standing here in front of groups and people is not so much the geographical place of the crucifixion of Jesus, but it's the reason why Jesus died. For us, this is the, the key element in our presentation. Why Jesus died on the cross here in Jerusalem? That is the answering to this question is going to change people's life. It's not the geographical place. If I take you down and I actually tell you this is exactly the spot of the crucifixion of Jesus, if you don't believe in Jesus, if you don't believe in the sacrifice of Jesus, that place is not going to change your life. So today I want you to take you through the evidences because we do have evidences. But also you need to know that we take the opportunity of the evidences that we have here to tell you Jesus loves you. That's why he dies for you. That's why he left the glory of the Father, something that, I mean, you is perfectly happy up there. But he decided to come down because he wants to live his eternity together with him and not without you. And that's because of love. And that is so important and I want you to think about it today, not just the geographical place of the crucifixion of Jesus, but also the spiritual connection that you can have today here in Jerusalem to the possible place of the crucifixion. So now, if you want to come closer, take some pictures, that's a perfect time, and then we're going to move on towards the second part of the presentation, visiting the tomb together. This is supposedly Golgotha, and look at the two caves or eyes and then the nose and a mouth. Use your imagination. 